There's excitement in the chase, this I know Welcome everybody to Arise Shine with John and Carla Capetto of Broadcast of Faith Heights Church. So, so thankful you guys tuned in. We encourage you to share this post. If you're watching on Facebook, if you're on YouTube, uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Um, copy the link, share it to others later for the archive because you're a part of the ministry here. It's not just John and Carla. We need your help to spread this word out there beyond places we can go personally. So thank you for tuning in. I want to remind us of the scripture that this whole program is based on. It's Micah chapter 7 verse 8. The Bible says, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. So no matter what knocked you down in life, if your own mistakes knocked you down, if somebody else's mistakes knocked you down, it's time to just say, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. God's got the power to lift you up and out of anything that may have come your way. Today's a new day. Your future's bright. In Jesus' name, amen. Say <laughs> amen. hi, Carla. Hi. I think the guys got preach. Um, <laughs> hey, today we're going to talk about the local church. One of the reasons we want to talk about the local church is because recently, Brother Kenneth Copeland, he had That's a word right. for the local church. And what he said was 2021 is going to be mm -hmm. the year of the local yep. church. I know in 2020, it seemed like the devil did everything he could to shut down the church, to silence the church, yep. and to just muzzle us. But you know what? 2021 right, is Carla. the year of the local church. Brother Copeland, he said, for those churches who are preaching faith and prosperity and healing, he said that the glory yep. of God is going to come down and fill those so churches. Good. Faith Heights Church is one of those churches. Right. So we're going to talk about the local church. Yeah, and I like to say it this way, too. I highly respect Brother Copeland. That's been on my heart, too. The world is about to see the full power yes. of the local church. Mm. Back in Bible days, there was great reverence for the local church because the power of God was so strong yep. in the local church. And we're coming upon a time right now where the people... Even, even believers who maybe haven't been as committed as they should, we're about to see the full power yes. of the local church. And so one of the things we wanted to start with today, in the, the book of Matthew, chapter 16, Jesus talked about the gates of hell mm. shall not prevail against the church. I thought it's interesting. He didn't say the gates of hell shall not prevail against the Christian Right. Or maybe we could say the Lone Ranger Christian. Jesus used it in a corporate sense. He said the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. No wonder there's so much opposition to being That's a part right, of a local yeah. church. No wonder there's subtle thoughts in the morning on Sunday while you're tired. You don't need to go. Just watch online. And as thankful as we are for watching online, that cannot take the place of assembling together serving in your part and ministering to the Lord corporately in addition to receiving what we need ourselves mm -hmm. from the local church. The local church was established by the Lord Jesus himself when he gave pastors, uh, plural. Yes. Why would you give pastors if there was no such thing as a local sheepfold or a local church? Jesus established the local church. No wonder there's opposition against the local yep. church and against being involved with the local church. Well, one That's thing, Carla, right. just think about it. The gates of hell. What is that? <laughs> Anything of the devil. That's right. Disease, yep. depression, yep. anxiety, adultery, sin, fear, sickness. The gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. Mm. So it's really not. Does it surprise you no, that there's opposition to going to course. church, being a right. part of the local church? Right. I mean... The gates of hell, the devil has no defense for the local church. Right. That's right. Powerful. So we want to encourage you. If you're not a part of a local church, oh my goodness. The hour we're living in right now with diseases and plagues and meteors coming on the earth or whatever's <laughs> happening, 
you need to be involved yeah. in a good local church because these things have been prophesied. Some of this bad stuff's just going to happen. Mm -hmm. But if the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church, sounds to me like the local church is the safest place to be mm -hmm. in these end times. Now, it does make a difference what church you go to because right. let's face it, Man can start a church if they have good business skills. Right. Man can put a sign on the church, print a real nice business card, but that's not necessarily God saying, I want that. Man can do whatever he wants, but there are God-ordained local churches, and the yeah. Spirit of God will lead you to one if you're not a part of one. Get involved, be a receiver, be a giver, make sure that the assembling is happening yes. and not just gathering and, you know, I'm going to do my duty this week. And then the Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail against you because you're a part of the church. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, we have a track that we have actually uploaded on the church website, faithheights.org. <clears throat> Excuse me. And there's, we have like 40 of them or 40 plus that are free for downloads, free to view, free to print out. One of them that we wrote a few years ago is called Why Church. And it's a little track like all the Hope Notes are. And uh, we were just talking bef before uh, this broadcast today about being a hope dealer. Yes. We want to be hope dealers, not dope dealers. We want to be <laughs> hope dealers. And so we have like 40 plus of these little tracks called Hope Notes. And we want people to take them, read them, distribute them, send them to other people. One we pulled out for this uh, broadcast is why church? I mean, why church? I'm a Christian pastor. I'm going to heaven when I die. Why do I need to go to a local church? I'm saved. I believe in Jesus. Um, is it really that big a deal? Huge deal. Huge. Number yeah. one, the scripture we just read, the gates of hell should not prevail against the church, not That's the Lone right. Ranger Christian, the church. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people don't know, and a lot of people are not benefiting from the full power of the local church. Jesus established the local church to help believers grow in the Lord, learn about victory, live in victory yes. over everything the enemy, the world, the flesh throws your way. The local church is designed to give you a place to serve in the kingdom of God, yes. which has eternal significance beyond this life. The local church, I, I mean, what about healing in the local church? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where does God direct sick Christians to go if they get sick? He says, is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of yep. the church yeah. and let them pray over him and anoint mm -hmm. him with oil. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise them up. If he's committed sins, they'll be forgiven him. Again, no wonder there's opposition to being hooked and rooted in a local mm -hmm. church. Carla, we know from personal experience the power of the local church. Even, oh, yeah. again, with, with our children, which we said in, in messages in the past about um, how, how our kids love the local church, how they want to go to church, they, they want to serve in the church. And, and just share a little bit about what you think in that area has caused our kids to want to follow us to mm -hmm. church. I, I just think it wasn't our duty. They did, they're not going to follow right. duty, our but they'll kids, follow love. Our kids loved going to church. Even when they were small, when they were teenagers, our kids wanted to go to church. They wanted to go to children's church. They wanted to go to youth group. We never had to make our kids go to church. No. Our kids always wanted to they go to wanted church. To, and, and don't you think a part of it is because we learned a long time ago, and we said in messages in the past, that the reason our kids turned out well and want to go to church, even to this day, Mm -hmm. Right. Our, mm -hmm. our son who's 40 years old, right? Our, our newest grandson who's two, almost two <laughs> years old and all the grandkids in between and Rachel and, and everybody, they serve the church. They work in the church. And, mm -hmm. and, and for, guys, you need to realize that this, this is not because John and Carla are just lucky or, you know, some special favor has come upon us and not available to anybody else. We knew that church could not be a part of our life. Right. If our kids were going to go to church, mm -hmm. it could not be a part of our life. It had to be our life. Yes. The church is number one to us. Our family is way better because the church is number one. Mm -hmm. And when we say the church, people think of buildings and brick and steeples. We're talking about the body of Christ right. himself. Right. Well, our kids saw the word working in our lives. Not that we've been perfect in it, but they saw... Um, we taught our kids very young to tithe and to give offerings. I remember one time when um, Isaac, we had saved up the money and we got him his first Nintendo. I know that's kind of old school, but mm -hmm. back in the day, that was like a major thing for a kid to have. So we bought Isaac a Nintendo game 
And within like a month or something, he had a friend who didn't have one and wanted one. And he said, I want to give him my Nintendo. And at first we had to be kind of like, Ooh, we just spent a lot of money on that (laughs) game. But you know, (laughs) even from little, from, from young ages, our kids knew that giving, tithing, serving others worked. Our kids loved it when we would go buy groceries and go take them to people who didn't have groceries. They learned that what we learned in church of what the word said applied to their lives and it just showed them that it was true. When we messed up in life, when we would make mistakes and maybe get angry when we shouldn't have at the kids, we asked forgiveness, we repented. I mean, they saw us live the word and I think that just helped them to want to go to church to learn yeah. more. Yeah. And our kids served. Our kids loved oh, serving they, they serve. other people. Yeah. I mean, in more than one department at times. Oh, Voluntarily, yeah. you know. I mean, just, Carla, that's so powerful because I still think there's some people that they're not delighting in this. They're mm-hmm. kind of doing mm-hmm. their duty. And the Bible says if you really want to get into the higher things of God and the greater blessings, Mm-hmm. You have to delight in the things of God, not yeah. just duty, not just That's do right. because That's of right. duty. When you get to the delight stage, God sees your heart, you see your heart, and you open up to a vast, uh, m- much more of the blessings of God can reach your life mm-hmm. when you're doing it because you've sold out. It's not a part of your life. It is your life. Yes. And I know when you say church is your life, what are you saying? We're saying that Jesus, yes. his body in the earth, yes. the church is the body of Christ. The church is Jesus in the earth realm. That's right. So when we say church, is our, we're saying the body of Christ is our life. And then our family time, are you talking about good family time, trips to Disneyland, uh, movie night, and all these things, yes. they were so enhanced because we made sure those things were a part of our life, mm-hmm. an important part, but that God's things were our life. Right. And right. we saw it affect our kids. We've seen it. It's still today. It affects yes. our kids, our yes. grandkids. It affects our finances. It affected our marriage. Our marriage would not even be together today, I don't think, no. if it wasn't for our love for the things of God, the calling of yes. God, the church, our part in the church. It's like when you're hooked up to the church, you're hooked up to the power that the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. That's We've right. overcome storm after storm and sickness after sickness and challenge after challenge because of our mm-hmm. realizing that the local church is where we need to yeah. be planted. Another powerful thing about the local church is you have faith friends there. You know, that can help you, you have friends that oh, can help you so and huge, encourage Carla. you. Say you're going through something um, financially or in your marriage or a sickness. And if you're just talking to worldly mm-hmm. people, if you're talking to just your coworkers or something who don't know God, they may just give you worldly advice. They yeah. might mean well, but we need friends who can right. say, sit down, let's go through the scriptures. Let's, let me pray yeah. with you. Um, mm-hmm. Come on, you can do this. We need, we need that encouragement That's from so faith good. friends. And in church, you huge, get your huge faith deal. friends. People of like precious faith who yeah. will encourage you and just encourage you to go farther yeah. and farther and like to believe God when you yeah. want to give up. Mm-hmm. And that's powerful to have faith friends. It's, in it's a huge deal. It's yeah. such a huge deal. <clears throat> Some of the best advice I've ever received and that I've given to other people is, hey, listen, uh, what you're struggling with, it, yes, we, it, we need to overcome that. Um, the sins you're falling into, yeah, that's a, that's a deal. We need, we need to deal with that. We need to help you out. But the most important thing is stay hooked. Yes. Stay hooked with your divine connection. Stay hooked with your local church because the most dangerous thing is not that people keep falling into sins and keep messing up here and there. You know, we're all works in progress. And yes, those things need to be overcome. Yes, we need to get our act together. But the most important thing is stay hooked because even if you're tripping and falling on a daily basis, if you stay hooked, the current of your church will keep you on the right yes. path. You, it'll keep you still going down because you will work that thing out soon yes, enough. Yes. You will come up and out of those bondages and addictions soon enough. But if you disconnect, mm. that to me is the most dangerous thing, more yes, dangerous than any sin of the flesh because uh, you can overcome 
anything if you stay yeah. hooked. It's kind of like taking medicine. If I take Tylenol because I have a headache or something, I have no idea how Tylenol, a little pill that I swallow, right. can make my head stop hurting. I have no idea. But I take it and it works. Well, mm, some people have said, well, what is going to church really doing for me? I don't know, but I do know this. The word is like medicine. And as you go to church and as you continue to go and be faithful, hear the word, serve others, as you continue to do that, it's yeah. working things out in your life and your life is getting better and it's improving. That's so good. Yeah, we don't have to know how it works. Just stay hooked. Yep. The church will work on your behalf. The gates yep. of hell will not prevail against the church. There's healing in the church. Yep. You'll keep getting fed, keep getting equipped. I personally, Carla, and I've said this a lot, to the church, but I personally have I've observed in my own life and the people that I pastor that the greatest benefits of local church is what's developed in you over time. Yes. Because getting excited in one service is great, but even greater is what's developed in you over time. So when the storms of life come, not only do you have excitement, you have an equipping to actually win against battles that are trying to destroy you. Mm -hmm. What's developed in us over time is vital. Psalm 92, Psalm 92, the Bible says, they that be planted in the house mm -hmm. of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of their God. Yes. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age. They'll be fat, healthy, and flourishing. Yes. Yes. So many benefits. It didn't say he, he that visiteth, right? It said he that's planted. Yes. You got to find your local church. Floaters never really put down roots. They that's never right. understand the power of accountability. They never really get in there and serve. Well, I'm going to go to this church and this church because I you know I'm a part of all these churches. Yeah, you are, but you're a specific part as well. And, and you shouldn't feel like you have to be in physical contact with every other part of the body to be a part of the body. As a matter of fact, there's parts of the body because we're referred to like the human body. Right. Paul right. said, just like the human body has many parts, uh, you know, but, but one body, the body of Christ has many parts, but one body. Yeah. And it is totally okay to never hang out with certain parts of the body. Yeah. Right. I mean, it doesn't mean you're not, a, it just means you're doing your purpose. I mean, let's face it. The nose and the armpit don't have to hang out with each other, right? <laughs> I know exactly. that's a little graphic and gross, but no, the nose does its part. The armpit does its part. You know, everything works right. And you don't have to be physically together all the time to think, well, uh, I'm a part of the body of Christ, so I need to be involved. No, that can be a little abnormal at times. Find your place. Yes. Hook up where God's called you. Know your giftings. Yes. Know yes. your yes. callings. Fit where you belong. And we'll all be together in heaven anyway someday, but right now on the earth, we all have a specific part. It doesn't right. mean we'll never gather, you know, have a whole church-wide or city-wide church gathering or whatever. Right. But primarily, it's about finding your specific part, hooking up with your divine connections, and doing your function and supplying your part yes. Yes. so the yes. place you're called to can be everything it needs to be. Yes, that's good. That's so good. much in the local church that people need to benefit from. Yeah. And I see them not benefit. I mean, just like we shared earlier, is any sick among you? Mm -hmm. Well, what, what, God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, what do I do? Call for the elders of the church. Mm -hmm. Must be healing in the church. If God says, call for the elders of the church. That's right. And he said, if the elders will pray in faith and you'll believe with them in that prayer of faith, you'll be healed of whatever's wrong with you. Your sins will be forgiven and you'll be ready to get back into service. Yeah. yeah. It's so powerful. Now, Jesus. What about Jesus. How many good followers of Jesus do we have watching right now? Yes. How many people that say, I'm a follower of Jesus. Yes, yes I, I love the Lord. I'm a follower. Well, let me tell you something your Lord did. He was in the synagogue every Sabbath day as was his custom. Mm. Wasn't a, a custom of the day that good little religious people did. It was his custom yes. to be in church at least once a week. And you talk about an imperfect church. <laughs> the church he went to one day decided, let's throw him off a cliff. You know, and he walked right <laughs> through the midst of them. They couldn't touch him. But Jesus went to an imperfect church at least once a week. And you'll read the scriptures. At times, he was daily 
in the temple. So really, if we're followers of Jesus, yep. we're going to be in church at least once a week and yeah. at times daily, like week of glory or special meetings with yeah. Keith Moore or Mark Hankins or whoever, Jesse Duplantis. Mm -hmm. And so if we're followers, now, if the Lord was his custom to go to an imperfect church every Sabbath day and at times daily in the temple, hmm. if we're followers of the Lord, we need to take a hint from yeah. our Lord. Yeah. It's important to assemble. Yes, Watching is. online is fine. But coming together is assembling, working, not giving, receiving, yes. giving, receiving, interaction, yes. being a part. That's, yeah. that, there's no substitute for that. Well, <laughs> it's going to be a little graphic here, but um, what this reminds me of is the body parts like you were talking about. I used to work in surgery at, at a local hospital. And one of the responsibilities I had was anything that came out or off of the body goes to a lab and I was the one responsible for taking that body part to the lab. So I have carried in my hand just about every body part you can imagine. I've carried toes, fingers, arms. I've had to carry a whole leg before um, internal body parts. And when you see a body part like that in the natural, it's like that person is now missing mm. that part. And yes, praise God for the doctors who can help make up for that missing part and the medicines and all oh. the technology. Well, it's the same way in a church. Everybody has their part. And yep. if that part is missing, then it's missing. And that, those mm. every part is vital, even the little toe. So every part in the body of Christ, every part in a local church is so important. Yes, God can bring replacements and um, substitutes and, and help us do without that part. But there's an but original. That original part is, yeah. is really the way God intended it to be. Wow. So really, here's an here's a interesting analogy. If you are not a part of a local church, maybe you need to see yourself like an amputated leg. Exactly. It doesn't <laughs> look right. That's right. It doesn't feel right. It might be even a little gross. I, I, anytime you feel like, well, I don't need the church, that, that's like, just picture yourself as a finger cut off of somebody's yeah. hand. Yeah. Um, it's like, it's not normal, it's not right, it's not natural. We all need, God designed the system in such a way where we need each, each other. other. Yes. And finding yes, our yes. place. Oh, and you know what? The full blessing is on us when we're in our place. And I know everybody wants the full blessings. Everybody's praying for the full blessings. But the full blessings don't come unless we're in our place. That's I right. mean, because that's where those blessings are. It's not that God's holding out. It's just if you want the blessings, you've got to be where the blessings are yep. on the road that yep. they're on and in the place where you're supposed to be. There's a scripture in Colossians. Uh, I think it's Colossians chapter 2 where it talks about Jesus is the head of the body. We are the body of Christ. And in Colossians chapter 2 talks about nourishment coming from the head, Jesus, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to all parts of the body, now get this, through joints and bands. Yes. In other words, we get nourishment from Jesus through other parts we're supposed to be connected with, and then the nourishment gets to us. There's some things we're just not going to get directly from the head. It's yep. not how the body works. Some things you will, but some things you're not yep. going to get directly from the head. You're going to get from people who are connected to the body, the nourishment flows from the head to the body through joints and bands. And a lot of people are missing the nourishment of the head because they're just trying to pray for it. They're just trying to ask mm -hmm. for it. Oh, I don't, church isn't that important. They just keep trying to pray. They're not going to get a whole lot until right. they're in the flow, yes. the place where the nourishment yes. comes to them through other joints and bands. Yeah. There's something about being planted in the house of the Lord yes. that the devil doesn't want. That's right. He fights right. it. He hates it. He, he tries to make people think they're so spiritual they don't need church. They don't need no pastor. Yeah. Well, Jesus was very spiritual. Yes. And he went to church at least once a week, other times daily in the temple. Yep. Acts chapter 13, it says there was in the church that was at Antioch certain prophets and teachers. Teachers, well, I'm a teacher and I'm a prophet. I, I don't need church. I'm spiritual. There were prophets and teacher oh, in the church in the, in the book yeah. of Acts. And we're yeah. never too spiritual to not need what the Lord gave us. He gave right. us pastors, plural. In Revelation, he had a message for seven local churches. What if you weren't in that local church? Then you didn't get have mm -hmm. powerful messages from heaven. Yeah. Um, the Bible says Jesus walks in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. And the Bible says the seven golden candlesticks are local churches. Yep. And so Paul's letters, what are they to? 
churches in Galatia, church at Ephesus, church at Philippi. He wrote to local yes. churches. Yes. And when Brother Copeland said 2021, and, and you know, that's the year of the local church, mm -hmm. um, I underscore the word local. Yes. Because that's a big deal. Just being mm -hmm. a part of the universal church doesn't mean you're hooked up like you should be with that's the right. local church. Friends, yes. there's so many benefits to being a part of the local church. And that, therefore, there's opposition to you remaining faithful in your local church. The benefits are so powerful. There's things a local church can give you the world has no, no answer for, that's no right. cure for. That's right. And so we encourage everybody to be a part of the local church. Amen. So we're going to pray here in a minute, Carla. And we're going to pray that if, if you're not a part of a local church, that God would show you where the church is you're supposed to be a part of. Mm -hmm. And I realize if there's no local church in your locale, then online is great. But pray for a local church to start if there's not one there. Move to where there is a local church because you, you need the local church. Mm -hmm. Jesus went, we go. The early yep. church went to church. They, and so we encourage you, be a part of a local church. So let's pray before we close this broadcast. Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, we're asking that everybody watching this broadcast, either live or later on an archive, would find the church they're supposed to be a part of. Open their eyes, Lord. Direct their path. We know there's a place, a family, a spiritual family that they would love, that just be a part of it and, and just be involved in serving and giving and receiving what they need from you, Lord. Help them to find that church, we pray in Jesus' name. And now before we finalize this, if you're not born again, watching by camera, please say this salvation prayer and receive Jesus because we want to see you in heaven. Say this, Lord Jesus, I believe in you. I believe God raised you from the dead. And now according to your word, I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow, amen. this has been a great... Our time with you today. Thank you for watching. Carla, say goodbye. We see will you see later. you next Monday on Arise Shine. Yeah. Woo! We are all